Hey guys, Warred here. Today I wanted to quickly cover the changes that will happen next Tuesday uh, on the weekly maintenance, um, how it will affect PvP and, and kind of explain what they actually mean, right? Uh, so I've had a couple people in stream uh, ask about it. So usually when I see the same kind of question coming in, um, it's usually worth kind of breaking it down a bit. I'm sorry for how I've cut the changes here. Uh, I've, I've put them like this because I used the wowhead one, but then the ads were kind of taking up the full screen. It was really annoying. And then I couldn't find out like an easy way to get this to the full screen. I, I could have just put up the picture, to be honest. Uh, but it is what it is. Uh, so what do I think about each change? We're going to go through them one line by line. Um, obviously, this is my perspective. I'm not like at the tip top of the tier, like ladder. Um, only really rank 100 to I think 200 sort of that's where I bounce between uh, throughout the entire season so uh, I have some experience obviously versing a lot of different comps um, sort of played at you know a kind of competitive level uh, but it might change like people have might have different opinions and if you main some of these classes you might feel differently um, so again take this with a grain of salt just just education just my opinion right so the first thing, players now deal 20% less damage to DK, Hunter, and Warlock pets. Um, the thing with the DK ones is I haven't first many Unholy DKs, so I don't know how quickly their pets die. I imagine they would be as weak as the Hunter and Warlock pets, but I believe they're a lot easier to res consistently. So it's it's probably like we're looking at the Hunter and Warlock aspect here. Uh, do I think Hunter pets die way too quickly? I think so, right? You can Bladestorm and they'll be at like 20%. If the hunter isn't spending globals, uh, casting men pet nonstop. And if you actually focus the hunter pet, it usually just melts, right? Which means the hunter has to go and revive the pet, which is, I think, six seconds or something, which seems to be very punishing for something that's very easy for you to do unintentionally. And if you intentionally do it, it's still very easy for you to do, right? Like a lot of the times I will like see I have an execute proc and the pets are 50%. I'll execute, use the execute proc on the pet and then execute again and it's dead. So um, similar thing with the warlock pets, right? But I feel like warlocks can kind of manage it a bit better somewhat because it doesn't always have to be on top. Of, like it's not melee all the time. Um, so do I think it's going to make a big difference? I think it'll help for sure. 20% less damage will, you'll see an impact from it. Um, pets might just be like if you're if you're working on healing it and your healer is sort of sending it a hot or something every now and then it might only die if you're actually focusing it like focusing it down or you're versing something like ret warrior which has insane cleave uh walking dead this type of stuff right um i think this is in a move in the right direction and i think this is similar to a lot of the changes here right they're they're kind of gradual uh they're pretty smart comparatively like a lot of the times blizzard will do pvp tuning in a really stupid way where they'll just say you know this spec has been too strong it's awful now like you don't get to be good anymore and i think people really like shadowlands because there's so many more things until sort of the last couple of weeks that were good like you could play our shaman you know warrior shadow priest or you could play like hage pal or you could play uh a whole bunch of type of comps like i feel like jungle was good I think RMP was good, all the cleaves are good, caster cleaves are still good. Like, it, it feels like everything was good, and then people sort of realized, hey, there's a certain healer that can do this really well, and there's a best caster that can deal with the other situations really well too, and then there's a certain type of melee, although I do think there's more variety that you see in the melee, um, but obviously that caster is Fire Mage, the healer is HPAL, and the melee DPS. Um, I don't know if it's it's as meta. Like I think the the duo is like Fire Mage HPAL melee, or even Fire Mage HPAL X. You can put anything in that X apart from like DKs and hunters, and it probably works. So, um, you know, it's worth thinking about why that happened, and then kind of working backwards, which is I think what they're trying to do, trying to revert some of the the legendaries and conduits that kind of made these classes a bit too strong in the current meta. So the first, next thing, in 2v2 arenas, damping will begin at 20% when both teams have a tank or a healer. This is a really good change. Um, I've been only really doing viewer twos. I haven't pushed twos at all on my main since 
they remove dampening. It's so slow, it's boring, I don't really have fun playing it. Um, I feel like every game ends up going really, really long, um, and you kind of end up losing where you'd probably normally end up losing had dampening started back where it used to a couple of weeks ago. I think they realized that the dampening change was wrong, and if you look at the meta in twos, sorry, the, the inflation in twos, so... Right now, I think 2.4k is like rank 2000 and NA in threes. 2.1k in twos is like rank 1000 or something similar, right? Um, way less people are interested in twos, I think, than ever before. It's probably a good thing because more people are doing threes. Um, and I think at the high level, dampening being changed back to how it was will kind of make twos fast again. It'll make it fun to just like no voice jump in there. And, and smash it out. Um, I think this is a good change. I'm looking, I'm really looking forward to doing twos again with these dampening changes. Um, and I think, yeah, huge step in the right direction. Definitely the current meta was so boring, like nothing would die for, for yonks, right? So um, I'm, I'm looking forward to that. I think this will be a good one for pretty much all warriors and melee, melee healer type of players. It's probably not a good thing for stuff like Shadow Priest. Um, maybe it is good for Shadow Priest. I, I'm, I'm just thinking about classes that would like self-heal a lot and would benefit from the current meta. Um, generally a good thing though. I think this is a step in the right direction. Druid. Convoke the spirits no longer cast Full Moon and Feral Frenzy. So Full Moon obviously was an insanely big issue uh, with Convoke the Spirits. So Convoke the Spirits alone cast I think 16 spells. And there is a, a, a chance where you can get the like Moonfire 16 times or something. It's, it's pretty low, but usually you'll see a Star Surge, you'll see a whole bunch of Wraths, you'll see a whole bunch of like Moonfires, all this kind of stuff, right? But Full Moon was one of those spells where if you high rolled it, um, and you got two, or you got even just a single one, uh, it could create up to 23, 24k, and there's heaps of clips of people getting one shot by Full Moon. Um, again... This is not a fun playstyle. I don't think anyone enjoys playing against Full Moon Convoke. Um, for a two-minute cooldown, it's way too potent, right? Like, you're thinking about Convoke the entire game if they don't press it, just because you can't actually live by using non-immunity defensives against Convoke. Um, you can't trade it very well. So a whole bunch of times I've died in Convoke with Parry, Ignore Pain, a Spell Reflect up. And rally like it's done like 100k damage and then other times like the, the convoke does like nothing like it does like 20k like 15k damage to the whole team so i think this is a good change did they need to change it for feral frenzy i'm not sure i feel like feral frenzy wasn't an issue like ferals in general their their convoke wasn't as scary because usually they have to be on the target you could kind of play around and just hold your trinket until they convoked um I feel like maybe this is kind of punching a class that probably isn't that insane right now. Um, I don't know if they had to remove it for that, but maybe maybe it's a good thing in the future just so they can buff other spells in, in the Feral kit. But I think Ferals are performing well anyway, but I don't think they needed this sort of indirect nerf to their Convoke, especially when Kyrian's so meta. Okay, now the big one. The, the two big ones everyone's thinking about. Trion Ward now provides 50% effective barriers, was 65% in PvP situations. Will this change much? I think it will a little bit, right? Obviously, um, I think before... So it was 60 65% effective, and I remember looking at the shields, and they were roughly like 14k or 15k. So losing like... Like, if you think about it and you go upwards, this isn't direct maths. I'm literally thinking about this in my head. Um, but I think if you roughly go upwards, that means in PvE, it would be somewhere along the lines of, like, 20k shields. So you're getting probably, like, 10k in shields or something. I think that's right. 10 to 12k in shields, I imagine. 10 to 11, 12k, that region. So it's it's effectively 3 or 4k off that, that try-in. Um... I don't know if this is going to change that much. I think Trion is still the best legendary by far, even with these changes. Uh, I think nerfing Trion too hard would have made mages kind of... I don't know how viable they'd be. 
because you just be able to kill them. And there's so many melee cleaves that are probably that are very good at killing mages anyway. So I think this is a good change. Definitely try and did feel very oppressive. The fact that you can't really think about a mage as a kill target when they run triune um, isn't a good meta, but I think this is sensible. I think triune's still really good. Uh, the next one, Infernal Cascade, Conduit Effectiveness reduced by 33%. So I did a bit of quick maths on this. This would probably mean that... Um, so Infernal Cascade increases your like your damage in Combustion when you use Fire Blast. You're obviously going to use two Fire Blasts. And I think this roughly results in 10% less damage during Combustion. Um, so I think this is going to make some impact in making Combustion a bit easy to live with. Right now, I think Combustion was far too good a cooldown for what it was and the fact you can farm it back so quickly um, I think this is definitely a step in the right direction and putting those two nerfs in place together uh, mages definitely feel weaker it's kind of crazy though because I don't think anyone expected fire mages to be this strong in the first place uh, even from beta right I think fire mages and holy pallies were ranked the lowest at the low and it's funny how this all turns out and a big reason why you know, if you're watching this and you don't play a meta class, you know, just stick with it. To be honest, like, this, these changes and whatever comes in the next three or four weeks could completely change the meta. I don't think these will completely change the meta. I think Fire Mages and Holy Powers will still be tier one, probably still the best in their respective roles. But it means that if you're playing the second, third, fourth, fifth best, you're not feeling so, it doesn't feel so oppressive that you have to do a certain thing. Okay, the Holy Pally changes, Divine Favor increased to 30 seconds, was 25 seconds. I think this will make somewhat of a difference. Um, it's it's slight, uh, but, you know, there's a lot of times where you would have got the kill had the Divine Favor, had the Pally not had Divine Favor, like if he just used it. And 25 seconds is, I guess, a, a bit faster. I think maybe the better way to think about it is to think about probably how long your average threes game goes for, right? So if your average threes game goes for like four minutes, which is what, um, 240 seconds, before you would have gotten, I probably should have done this math beforehand, but let's pull out a calculator, right? I just pulled out my calendar. Um, let's get a calculator out. Okay, apparently I don't have a calculator on my computer. So <laughs> uh, generally though, I think you would probably get one less divine favor a game which could make a big difference right that could be the, the chance of winning or losing but that that impact is spread out over the over every go so like if you use divine favor correctly i don't think this is going to impact you very much if you're not just wasting it um if you are wasting it then it will hurt you and then the next thing increases car speed by 30 percent was 60 percent this might be a pretty big deal i think this means that 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 heal firstly the heal is slower right so it's not going to hit the target in time and you can kill the target before that divine fave goes off the other thing is getting purge kicked or just having it purged is way way more likely all right because it's just slower so um i think a really hard thing in this season was kicking that purge kicking that was like kind of rng you just have to just send the kick if you, you just purge and send the kick and sometimes you get it now, I think with 30%, that's going to be pretty, like, way more easier to actually purge kick and just get a grip on. Um, so, you know, props to that. I think that that's that's going to make Paladin a little bit easier to shut down during those goes. It's probably going to make Disc Priests and Arshams um, a bit stronger in countering them um, if you can purge kick that. And, yeah, anything with a, with a spam dispel, really. But really good H-Pals usually won't be using Divine Favor when they're anywhere close to being uh, to being kicked. So, you know, if you're in a range against a good H-Pal and you're purge kicking them, um, you know, you're probably already going to win a lot of the times. Unless it's a rando like Klepto, the, the Divine Favor and kick really, really quickly from a very far away. Um, so the last one, Prot and Rhett. Um, wog has been reduced by 20%. So I think I remember looking at average wogs being like 15k when I play with rats, which means that that's a reduction of about 3,000. And then um, for prots, I'm not sure, maybe even higher, I think like 20k. So generally, like I think this will make a big deal difference. 
Uh, right now, the ret and prop meta, especially when played with a Holy Paladin and a Warrior, is not fun. Uh, the ret, ret off healing is a bit out of control in terms of the the size of the crit sometimes. I don't mind the general like 10k, 5 to 10k sort of topping consistently. I think the toxic part is when you've set up a really good go on a ret, he like just randomly crits a wog while he has a wings proc up and gets like, you know, his entire HP bar back with crit. Um, which obviously it will decrease the size of those crits. So had you had gotten a crit for like 25,000, right? Let's say it's a really big crit wog. Um, that's now going to be what? Um, 20k. So I think this will make a pretty big difference. Um, not as much as people expected, but I think as health, health pools go higher and I guess the off healing usually stays similar for like rets and hybrids in general, um, this will this will eventually I think feel pretty good and balanced. So uh, that kind of concludes this section of the video. If you're just here to watch um, what the updates were and what they mean, um, there you go. Uh, hopefully that helped you a little bit. Hopefully I explained it in a good way that so you can kind of understand what these changes will actually do. Uh, so I just wanted to talk maybe for two or three minutes about what I think the next nerfs will be. Um, obviously complete speculation, but just based on what these nerfs are, I think we're going to see a whole bunch of nerfs that are similar. Very, very slight tweaks. Um, and usually I think they seem to put two weeks apart. So I think this is pretty smart, but as it gets closer to the end of the season, people will get more frustrated at how slow the pacing is of this and not really be thinking longer term. So firstly, uh, I think there will probably be slight tweaks to like burst in general. Uh, once people are at 226 eye level and they can get a really good sample size of how quick the games are going and you know, how that scales with gear and generally like, not, not just on, on the top level, but I guess on average as well, because you know, um, they're going to see how different gear is going to make the PVP situation. And there might be certain spells that feel overpowered now that start to feel less powerful once everyone's a 226 or 227. Um, even if that means just having an extra 30 to 4k more HP. Um, so I think they're going to see how these, these roll out. I do think there might be some slight changes to worry abilities. Like I mentioned in the intervene video, um, Apologies for that video. I did put a very clickbaity title on it and I kind of realized that after I put it out and I'm like, oh shit, people are going to interpret this very differently to what I mean. When I say nerf to the ground, I mean, I think they're just going to like reduce the duration of it in PVP or reduce or uh, increase the cooldown to 45 seconds. Um, I think that is a really, really good change uh, if they do do something like that. Um, as in... If that's the only warrior change they make, you know, we're kind of out of the woodworks. Warrior is still very strong. It's really good. It'll be fun. Um, I think there might be some slight damage tweaks or, you know, maybe tweaks on execute and stuff like that. If it gets too high, execute and condemn. But I don't really see warriors getting touched that much. Uh, mainly because I don't know what they would touch. I think ignore pain is, is a candidate. Maybe they make that cost five more rage or something. Um, maybe they make intervene 35 or 40 seconds cooldown. Um, but without as essentially an expansion um, or like a removal of pretty big aspects of PVE warrior kit, um, I don't see how they can easily make balance changes that would be pretty good. So I think they're waiting to see what happens there. And I don't think... Warriors are so insane that uh, there's nothing they can do about it. We're yet to see, though. Completely speculation. Um, I do think maybe there'll be some Boomkin nerfs in terms of survivability of bear form and stuff like that. Maybe they'll touch that a little bit, reduce that a little bit. And um, I would be very question. It would be very questionable if 
they didn't buff resto druids in some form. Um, I think resto druids are feeling extremely underpowered compared to disc priest, Arsham, and HPAL. Um, and then finally, right, I think they need to put some pretty big buffs to Mist Weaver. Um, either a, something similar to Life Cocoon from last season, like reducing it down to like 45 seconds. And even then, it's like, I think I think at that point they'll be good again. But um, right now, they feel awful. Like, I haven't seen one um, for, for a very long time. So I think they need to put some serious buffs into Mist Weaver, make that class viable again, make it fun. You know, bring bring the fist weaving back. Bring Give them big heals, give them fist weaving, give them something to look forward to. I think it's, uh, it's a real shame that, you know, that's the current meta at the moment. Um, and then DPS wise, you know, maybe Demo Lock and all these all these F tiers, they might try and roll something out for. But I think it's kind of clear that sometimes Blizzard just thinks that something shouldn't be made for PvP. So hopefully this video was helpful. Um, it was long. I apolog apologize for that. Um, a little bit of a rant and just discussion um, about these changes and where I see Arena going next. Uh, I'm looking forward to seeing this. I always like a, a shift up with the meta, and I think generally people are bored of this meta, man. It's it's boring to queue a lot of the times and just queue into the same three comps nonstop. It's the same four or five classes. Having a variety is fun, and I think it's good for the game, and it's what made Shadowlands PvP Arena Season 1 at the first three weeks, two weeks really, two to three weeks, really exciting. Um, you'd see different comps every time. You'd see spells you've never seen. You'd learn how to counter them. You'd do all this kind of stuff. But now it feels like our meta is very heavily set in. Fire Mage, Hage Pal, put something else in there, and you're good to go. Um, and it would be nice to see something change, some shifts. Let me know what you think. I, I'd be very curious. Um, obviously, completely my opinion. So... Don't take offense if I said I'm, I want this class to be nerfed or I want this to be changed because maybe I'm wrong and you are, you might be completely right. And a lot of this was speculation at the end. All right, guys, take it easy. Have a good one. Um, enjoy the next videos that come out soon.